Yeah. So we're ready? Talk. You can talk like that. How close do we okay. need to be? To, are y'all's mics are closer to y'all? Do we need to be a certain distance? We got to teach, no, we gotta teach Jordan how to run his mic. Hello. Okay. How close do I need to be? Okay. We like need to give Jordan the mic more. So. Hello. Yeah, just, just <laughs> get close. Mic, we're good. Mic phobia. We're getting new mics, so. We don't, we don't need mic phobia in here. We have four mics that are coming. That I are don't made need no mic. Get, you mean we're going to get real quick? Real, real mics. We're more than this? We're going to be but, but they're what jo Justin needed for the yeah. for, for getting better. I don't quality. even know who Mike is. Let, let me. Let me tell everybody what we're doing. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, did you record all that? That's pretty good stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, that's stuff we need. That, will you record? Just just hit record. And just hit record. Edit, we'll go. Edit it as we go because that's what we that's don't want to miss any of the best stuff, which is when we're not thinking about cameras. And that's a spam. Somebody race. always calls at the right time, don't they? Spam yeah. Race. Yeah, I had the spam rest call a while ago myself, but I don't need a spam rest call now. Anyway, what we're doing, for those of you who are listening, we're going to start a new uh, roundtable where we're just kind of discuss like we do in the office all the time. And I've always wished I could bring everybody into the office and we could just sit and discuss. And there's really not been a bigger time to do that than right now, because we live in a I didn't think I'd ever see a time when I'd have to pastor like we're doing right now. Uh, there is a darkness and an evil that that has risen, and uh, it's affected churches everywhere. It's affected the way we do things. It's divided people, and so it's a unique time to be a pastor. I never had a course, and uh, what do you do when Satan launches an all-out attack, and somebody's trying to overtake your country, and, and there's... Uh, all kinds of lying, manipulation, pandemic, and everything that we're dealing with right now. And then we preach messages trying to address it, and uh, then the staff comes in, and they say, oh, you might have offended about half the people out there, and it's not ever my intention. I don't mean to offend you. Uh, I hope I've been clear uh, that we even, you know, you can disagree with me. We're just people trying to read God's Word and study and make our way through something that we've never been through before. But what we wanted to do is bring you guys in on our discussion. Hopefully, we're going to get this to where we can do it always live, and we will give you an opportunity to tap in with questions that we can kick around. Uh, and sometimes these guys don't agree with me. That's because they're not, you know, genius like I am. But <laughs> Not yet. Not but sometimes, yet. <laughs> so, and sometimes they've got questions, or sometimes I've got questions. Uh, sometime what we're doing is just plumb goofy. Hadn't got anything to do with anything, but it's real life here at the church. And I thought if you could see us really discussing and kind of arguing and well, not arguing, but just wrestling with some of the big issues of our day. And these are huge. They're huge issues. But what we want you to know up front is that we love every one of you. Mm -hmm. And even if uh, we're taking a position right now, I've taken some pretty hard, firm positions on some things, but our motto is the same all the time, love God, love other people. And uh, Some of those won't change. Like, you're, you're against broccoli, and it's going to stay that way. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not ever going to like broccoli because it's evil. <laughs> it's, of, it's of the devil. And, There's a sharp line right here. Yeah. And it is so, Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. So if someone's watching this on yes. Thursday... We're not there yet. And we? this is a big day. We've got a lot we're praying about today. Uh, I believe that, and I'm going to go into some of this here in a minute, but I believe that uh, we've had some real uh, nefarious things going on with the vote. I'm afraid they will even be taking place today, and uh, those two Georgia Senate seats are vitally, vitally important. They're two communists trying to take over. If they get those, the uh, Senate as well as the house is lost to radical liberalism, communism, socialism, whatever you want. Uh, but anyway, they have been saying themselves, you heard Chuck Schumer say, uh, that they wanted to take Georgia, and when they took Georgia, they would change the United States. And I'm uh, that change of the United States is not a good thing, and it will attack the church, it will attack 
your rights. It will attack your freedom. I'd say in a year, you're not going to see America, if they are successful and they can pull off this coup of the presidency and everything, you won't see America like you've seen it before. Mm. And uh, I, to me, <clears throat> the big problem out there that I'm seeing right now, even among Christian people, is there is an ignorance because of a lack of studying. And God's Word says, because of the lack of knowledge, my people perish. And I do not want to see God's church perishing. He gave me a, a verse this week. i got, I got to share that with you. One of, one of the things you said just a minute ago, though, was that, that, that my fear is is that you you said that he was saying, it'll, or it'll never be, it won't be America like we've ever seen before, but I think we're already there in an America we haven't seen before. And it's all based off of fear, which is one of the things that you had preached about a couple of Sundays ago, where people are not supposed to be living in fear. We're already there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the whole, their goal and the way you manipulate people is through fear. That's not a new thing. Satan started using that up front. Fear didn't come until Satan brought it in the garden. Mm. And I thought it was interesting this week, in my own personal prayer time, and and please don't anybody think I'm accusing you of this. I'm not. This is a personal word of God to me. Uh, because of some stances I think I have to take as a, as a man of God, as a minister. This is not a time for us to cower. It's a time for us to stand. And I was in my own personal quiet time. This is a word from God to me. I'm not attacking anyone with it. But I ran across this read in Revelation and as in 21, verses 7 and 8, the one who conquers will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowards, faithless, detestable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their share will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And and that just, it spoke to me because the first word listed in that of people who deserve fire and deserve the second death and eternal destruction, which are, you know, they've been, that's not woke. Uh, and it, but I'm not trying to be woke, I'm trying to be truthful. Uh, but it, it struck me that the first people he said that were worthy of that in that list were cowards. So I went and looked it up in the ESV. That what I was reading here and what I've been reading in my quiet time is uh, the CSB, the Christian Standard. Uh, because of the ease of the reading of it, I really liked it as a translation. And, uh, but I, to me, cowards, and it's the Greek word delos, which means to be cowardly or timid or fearful, uh, which goes back to what Nat was saying there a while ago. What, what was that? I'm talking all the time. I need to let y'all talk. What was that revelation passage? What was it? 21. That's revelation 21, 7 and 8. 7 and 8. Let the record show I was talking about the Christian Standard in 2010, back in the day. <laughs> it was the Holman back then, but now it's the Christian Standard yeah, Bible. Yeah, the, Jordan the, is our village idiot. The other, the other day. <laughs> I was ahead of the game, but not really. <laughs> so on Sunday, during Sunday school, we were talking about different translations, and I was mentioning... My top three favorites were the ESV, CSB, and the New American Standard Version. And so when that's what I was re tell, telling Jordan whenever yeah. you said it was the CS, CSB. CSB, yes. Whenever you're, what you're reading in your quiet time, I was saying, hey, that's my top threes. Yeah, my, well, my top, if I were just list them, my top is in the yes. New American Standard Bible. And uh, did you know they got a 2020 update? The 2020 update. Yeah, that's the only even, good thing that came out of 2020. I hadn't even memorized the first one yet. <laughs> yeah, we're still back in 95. I didn't realize that either, and I good. usually keep up with these that's things. That's the only good thing Nerds that came out Bible of 2020. Nerds and Bible are always updating. Well, I, this one even flew past my radar. <laughs> we, need them, we need them to leave things alone, you know. As soon as I learn this one, you can update me. I can't even work my phone anymore. <laughs> I get a new update. Tonight I'll be asleep. Some nerd will be at work. <laughs> I won't be able to turn it on. <laughs> Stop so, all right, updating. you got old people out here. Leave us alone. But that's a, for New American Standard, that's 25 years that they had gone without an update. Yeah. But yeah. 2020, they got them up with a new update, which is, which is good because it's... I, we don't know exactly what they updated, but some of the stuff that we had problems with before was the 
cover margins, different right, styles. Usually updates, the presentation. Had to do with, yeah, presentation. Yeah, packaging. Like but if they did any kind of modern language update while still keeping to a very formal word for word translation, that could be the best of both worlds. I'd be curious to see. Of course, that's the, what we like about it. so mechanical coming off the original languages. Uh, CSB. And I'm not sure we don't want to start using CSB more. And it's so readable. It's a very accurate translation. And I, I like I said, I'm tending to use it myself a lot. Uh, so anyway, it's a good translation. Mm -hmm. And we're getting, I get, well, we don't, I started to say we're getting off course, but we don't. Hmm. We don't have a course. We don't have a course. That's the one I was doing the memorization <laughs> from back a few years ago. And now I switched to ESV yeah. more. But, so. But I would like for us to stop right quick and, and pray for the election that's going on. The, one of the things we believe very much is that if, if a battle's won on earth, it's got to be won in heaven. The heavenly's first. Mm -hmm. And so we call on God. Sugarlamp and I were praying early this morning uh, for this election. Jordan, what, would you just lead us in a prayer about that right quick and pray that, you know, the right votes be counted and that the fraud couldn't take place and the vote would be real and all that good stuff. Yes, sir. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we always come to you first in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being our Father and Creator and thank you for always taking care of us. Amen. Thank you for saving us and letting us be a part of your church and to be in this country, even in this time. That's right. And with all the things taken away, Father, we're thankful for what we have. Mm -hmm. But, Father, we pray to be a nation that seeks after you. That's right. And we pray to be a nation that we were founded upon, uh, that points to you, and uh, is a place to share the gospel with the whole world, is a place for freedom, freedom to love you and love others, and to give and serve, not because we're told to and have to, but because you've changed us That's and want right. us to. That's right. You want us to. And Father, we pray to be a nation that's founded on your word mm -hmm. and your truths. And we pray for this election today. We know who we want elected. And Father, we believe from your word that these, uh, these people, um, Purdue and, and Leffler, they, they want uh, what's right in your word. And they're for freedom and they're for truth and they're for righteousness and justice. And Father, we uh, pray more than anything for what your will is. But from what we understand, this is what we would believe, Father, would help to keep our nation from going towards more evil mm -hmm. and more injustice right. and leading people away from Christ and for your intention for humanity. Mm -hmm. And Father, we pray for um, light in this election that is transparent that it's fair. Father, we pray that you'd make it possible for all the poll watchers, all the observers to be able to see clearly what's going that's on right. for everyone that's legal that gets a chance to vote mm -hmm. and use their freedom. Father, we pray ultimately uh, for these two candidates and those Republican candidates to win so that they have a uh, the say in the government, mm -hmm. Father. Boys. And we pray for uh, the corruption to be held back, or we pray for it to be visible and rooted out. Yeah, exposed. And Father, we just pray for a free and fair election. We pray, Father, for everyone to rise up and cast votes that should be able to. Mm -hmm. And Father, no matter what, we, we do want what your will is. But this is what we're seeing, and we just ask in the name of Jesus that you can do anything and that you would make it possible. Father, we always ask in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. No. Yeah. You know what? Oh, amen and amen. Amen and amen. Not a, <laughs> Not a woman, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> the goofiest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> a woman. I don't know how to... And we had a full polytheistic prayer. I was going to say, I don't know how you to know, pray to Brahman, fully. Huh. But to Brahman, I, the, God, the chief god of, it, of Hinduism... And somewhere, I don't know, that's probably not what the forefathers had in mind. <laughs> no. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't get it. I, I, I just don't get it, what's going on in our world today. I sure don't get why Christians don't have their eyes open to see what's going on. Because if you have, if you have a Bible and you've read history, 
and you go and you check out real science, not what somebody's trying to poke down you, pseudoscience. Uh, you know, I've been, well, last week and the week before even, I was talking about masks and, you know, and if I, I hope I didn't offend you. I'm not trying to offend anybody. Uh, but I am at war against the mask, and, and I've tried to explain why. And uh, I know these guys here, they had some questions, and so I'm going to try to answer some of those questions right now. Uh, first of all, the reason I'm against the mask primarily is a biblical reason. I believe there in Genesis 1, 26, uh, where he says, uh, let us make man in our image. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the Trinity. And, and the chief reason that we're made in the image of God, of course, is to bring glory back to him. And we do that in that the way we're created in his image. He is Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He made us tripartite. Just like he's tripartite, part of that, the part that was visible to us in the the Trinity himself, in God himself, one God, three persons, uh, was Jesus Christ, who came in the form of a man. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh, the glory of God is supposed to be reflected in the face of a child of God. So... Um Maybe it would help with some people that may be listening to explain the tripartite a little bit more. Well, that'd that, be kind of like taking a gallon bucket to the ocean and filling it full of all the sand. <laughs> 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 the, the, just, just a simple understanding of, you know, what what is the tripartite aspects of the of well, man. That simply means that well, the man or, the, or God? Man. The man. Well, there's... We're body, soul, and spirit. The, the uh, body, of course, is the part we see. Mm -hmm. The soul of a man is the seat of the mind, the will, and the emotions. Uh, it's who we are. The spirit is that part. Really, the communication link between us and God is is the spiritual part of us. And So uh, people's spiritual link, many of them have it hooked into the wrong thing. You hook it into the wrong God. And ultimately, that part of us is dead until we're born again in Jesus Christ. Uh, but the part that everybody's walking around looking at right now, the, where the Christ in me, the hope of glory, is coming through, is well, when I smile at somebody in a grocery store, when I, when they can see the expressions of my face, then they can see something of my inner being mm -hmm. as they see how I'm acting and reacting and. They can see my lips move. And so so I've really grown against the mask. If I'm in a place where uh, they just want me to wear a mask, they own the business. Uh, I, I prefer not to go in a place where they're insisting I wear it. But if I just have to go in a place, I have bought me a little ghost shield. And it's clear. I just kind of stick it on my nose and I go in. Everybody's happy then. Uh, but uh, you can see <coughs> my face. You can see, still see the, the smile, and I've had a lot of people come up and say, "Hey, where'd you get that, man? I want to, I want, I want to get one too." And I said, "I'm going to order me some more just because we're under these mass mandates." And when we first started all this, I, you know, I'm like everybody else. We've been, we've been on a learning curve, and so we shut the church down. The stupidest thing we ever did, by the way, we shut God's church down. Shouldn't have ever done it. We did for a few weeks, uh, did everything online. I think it, it hurts the body. Mm -hmm. God told us very clearly that he wanted us to meet together, so we need to be meeting together. And uh, uh, I believe that there's something much more sinister going on. And that COVID-19 is being used for that much more sinister something. And so why am I so against the mask? Well, it starts with being made in the image of God, and I don't think I would have covered up. It needs to be seen. I also believe that it's part of this whole sinister plan. Who wants to cover my face? Well, not God. Uh, Satan. 
wants to cover my face. Now, if you don't believe in Satan, it's no big deal. But I do. Mm -hmm. I believe he's evil, and I believe he's got an evil plan. I've seen it all the way through the Word of God. And uh, and I, I really believe Texans. It has surprised me that Texans have been so willing to just submit. And that that's what that mask is. It's a form of submission. You go into an, uh, a Muslim country, the women are wearing their, their faces covered. Why? Because they're in submission to that man. And, the, and I believe there's a dark, sinister forces that well, want us to walk. And if we remember the debate we were having in 2019, uh, the whole debate in 2019 was about, say, Muslim women going into the convenience stores wearing full masks. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, look, we got security cameras. We need to see your face. Anyone that walks into a store, don't wear a mask because we don't know what you're doing. We can't see what you're doing. And it was groups like Antifa, Black Lives Matter, rioters that didn't want their face seen because they were doing bad things. And they or, gave them the convenient excuse to do it. And they were protecting their bad their deeds face. or people that were under submission and had no free will choice. That was a debate we were just having last summer, a year and a half ago. And so quickly, all of a sudden, we're now told that we need it's to wear flipped. a mask or you can't even go in. Now it's flipped. So what was the what was the problem before was people wear masks. That's scary, weird, strange thing. You're now doing something bad. Yeah. Now it's to total opposite. If you're not wearing a mask, it's this idea of you're the one that's wrong. You're the one that's weird. bad. As a matter of fact, it's gotten so far to the point of mass shaming <clears throat> to where you see all these videos of people that are lashing out uh, with anger towards people who are not wearing a mask. You never see a video of somebody who's not wearing a mask lashing out somebody wearing a mask. It's always the opposite. You always got the Karens that are, I'm, you should be wearing a mask. And, and we've also ran into several situations of that locally. Well, but if you go study, uh, read Marx, Karl Marx, and the communist agenda, which by the way, they said they laid out a plan and said they would take over the world, said they'd take us without firing a shot. And they have been following that plan. You can read their own material and see it. I'd challenge you to do that if you don't believe me. Just go go read the Communist Manifesto, read the writings of Karl Marx, go on the, the uh, American uh, Communist Society and read what they have to say. They have it all laid out, and they're following that plan. We're just kind of, you know, we're the sheeple. <laughs> Yeah, we've just kind of, kind of fallen into place and doing exactly what they want us to do because they've got us afraid. Again, it goes back to fear. Get the people afraid, and they'll do what they want to. But uh, I, I don't get to do this on a Sunday morning because it's, you know this is a little bungalow. But I brought it with me today, <laughs> and <clears throat> uh, I went back and pulled up the earliest study I could find on cloth mask. Uh, because Dr. Anthony Fauci, y'all remember, he did a 60 Minutes interview uh, late March of 2019, back when all this first started. 2020 or 19? 2019. Did I say 20? No, you said 19. I wanted to double well, check. Yeah, well, it goes. I it was 2020. <laughs> I said it wrong. See, you, you caught me. It's, it's the reason you have no friends. You. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, you know I'm playing with you. Well, yeah, you know, because I'm always playing with you. <laughs> right. uh, but here's what Dr. Fauci uh, said. Now, this is, he said, people should not be walking around with masks. Now, right then, he's quoting uh, a study. Not quoting a study, but he's referring to a study he knows exists from the British Medical British, Journal, yeah. 2015. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. Wearing masks might make people feel, and he did that, I remember seeing it on the video, feel a little better, and it might even block a droplet, but it is not providing the perfect protection that people think it is. Mm -hmm. And often, there are unintended consequences, and, and he, he didn't go into that, but I'm fisting to. Uh, people keep fiddling with the mask, and they keep touching the mask, and... If you go back to that study that was done early in 2015, uh, I'm just, I just highlighted a few things, but I'm going to share them with you. 
He said the, says the rates, this is the study itself out of the Br British Medical Journal Open, uh, April 22nd, 2015. The rates of all infection outcomes were highest in cloth masks in the cloth mask arm. They divided these study groups into three groups. Uh, and uh, with the rate of the ILI statistically significantly higher in the cloth mask arm compared with the medical mask arm. An analysis <clears throat> by mask uh, use showed in the laboratory confirmed virus were significantly higher in the cloth mask group compared with the medical mask group. Penetration of cloth mask by particles was almost 97%. <laughs> And medical mask was 44%. So here, they got everybody covered up. And 97% of particles they've already said are going to come through that mask. Uh, I, I pulled up another uh, out of a science. And how many people are running around with medical grade mask? No, well, none. And, well, some, a few. And, it, and honestly, the medical grade mask, they would tell you, if you really want protection, you don't wear that. You wear an N95 mask. They're very expensive. They're made in China. Oh. <laughs> and they had a little... <laughs> they come laced yeah, with just, corona. Just so I'd throw that in there. They were prepared <laughs> early for that. <laughs> <laughs> but in this, uh, in this one here by Science Daily, and uh, they're speaking of the study done by the British Medical Journal. The results of the first randomized clinical trial to study the efficacy of cloth masks was published in the uh, BMJ Open. The results of the study caution against the use of cloth mask. The authors speculate that the cloth mask moisture retention, their reuse and poor filtration may explain the increased risk of infection. There were, in other words, the study group, people were having more respiratory infections because of it. Despite more than half the world using cloth masks, global disease control guidelines, including those from the World Health Organization, failed to clearly specify conditions of their use. These guidelines need to be updated to reflect the higher infection risk posed by cloth mists as uh, found in our study. Professor McIntyre said the study's results pointed to the effectiveness of medical mask in addition to the harm caused by cloth mask. And they got everybody running around wearing these cloth masks. And uh, so I, I made me a few notes. I hope y'all got a minute. So, so let, me, <laughs> let me ask this. Two two things that I'm seeing that I'm that is an issue. One is the cloth mask is not really doing much of anything to protect it no, at all. Ninety seven percent of the particles is it, coming through it, right? Yeah. And then pl not to mention that when you're sitting there breathing in and and most of these masks aren't even being washed. Oh man, it's, the majority of the time. So you're breathing this is in nasty business where bacteria. You're going back into pig business. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're breathing <laughs> yeah. in bacteria. For who knows how long that somebody may go without washing a mask, and not to mention the fact that um, the number one thing that I was always taught whenever there's a sickness going around is don't touch your face. Right. And a mask promotes touching the face all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't see how this is any better. Well, I want to keep my hands away from my face. Well, we should. Unless and I'm, I'm horrible about my wife's always saying, "Put your hands, to get your hands down," like I'm four. 64. <laughs> at, at any length, uh, science doesn't back it up. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. There's nothing more, much more dangerous than a redneck that can read. But the, prob but the uh, problem is, is that people will say that you're not trusting the science. But the science changed for 2020, and that's what's weird. You go read the news, <coughs> and all of a sudden everything they had before 2020 has changed in order to fit the narrative that they're pushing. But that, a lot of this comes too, and I've been talking about this a lot lately because it happened for me, is the news we get. Uh, because I have learned from this church that there are certain news agencies that have, I mean, everyone's got an agenda. And I knew for a long time, don't go to CNN, M MSNBC, ABC, all these places for your news because they're going to be very left-wing and radical. Go over here for your conservative news. And I was doing that for politics. I was starting to do it more and more. But when this year started, I wasn't doing that for everything else. I said, oh, I can go here for some other information. And I, I started to realize I was going over here to learn about COVID, even our local news, and getting COVID numbers and mask information. And, oh, here's a little pop-up on Facebook and YouTube. And I didn't realize that I, while I was watching for the politics, 
the politics affects everything, including what they're telling us about what masks we should wear or not and how, how bad COVID is or not. And I wasn't checking my news sources for all stories, not just politics. Once the election hit and I started saying, wait a second, there's, they're saying this is corrupt and this isn't. But why am I listening to this other group that says there's no corruption and I'm listening to them about masks and corona? And that really started to open yeah. up my eyes a bit. Yeah, that's and that's because there's an agenda. Anybody that's ever studied history at all knows that there are several groups out there right now. One of them is a group that it has a, a, a very evil agenda. They have announced it to us in 2020. They came right out in the open with it. They say it. I mean, listen to a politician talking from the radical left. They're spouting the words of an agenda that they have laid out. They said, here's what, we're going to take your guns away. Yeah, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. Yeah, we're, we're going to take your guns away. We're all about the climate, which is a big deal. The Green New Deal. Yeah, the, the, here where the Green New Deal makes absolutely no sense. You can't afford the Green New Deal. But they don't want you to afford the Green New Deal because they're trying to bankrupt the economy. Uh, that's mm. part of the agenda. And I want to get into that in just a minute, too. But, but let me finish on the mask or what I got to say about it. Uh, one of them, first of all, it doesn't fit the science. Second of all, the use of the mask. You were talking about a while ago, people put touching the mask and... Uh, well, people don't follow the, even the CDC protocols. How many people do you see walking around that mask is done? <laughs> oh, yeah. their mouth and not the nose, yeah. yeah. But you're evil because you decided not to wear one. They, their nose is sticking out. Sneezing. Of yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that thing. And I see people, man, that mask is filthy. Mm -hmm. I've, I've carried one around on my dash, you know, and just take it up, put it in, you stick it in your pocket. and Maybe and drop it on the ground. Cross-contaminating and everything. So there's yeah. a germ. I got it now. <laughs> uh, so they they don't follow any protocol. Well, I understand you're supposed to be taking that thing, and then if you, you fold it just the right way, and then you put it down in a bag, and every time you get out of your truck, you're supposed to get a new mask, and then put the other one down the bag till you can take them home and and wash all of them. So nobody uses the correct protocol. It's just a nasty mess. Mm. But they're mad at you, and there they are. Got that junk all over their mask, you know. Got boogers on it. <laughs> <laughs> They've been sneezing in it, and then then you got that virus that's smaller. So if you did pass through some of it, it's stuck on your mask, but it's smaller than the hole in the mask. So now you're, you're sucking, sucking it all in. <laughs> it, it makes no sense, uh, and and that's kind of the problem right now across the board. No common sense. Mm -hmm. No common sense there's just not any needs to start uh, people need to start thinking instead of just being told what to think well, actually do the well thinking. they started years ago teaching people what to think rather than how to think right in school yeah and and people need to know how to think and you better be thinking for yourself mm -hmm. because covid has been you it, it's real okay i've known people had it got very sick i've, I've done Known people died. Uh, I've also known people died of flu and other things. Our by the way, our death rates are not up according to CDC. Uh, 2019 death rates were not as high as, or 2020 were not as high as 2019. Hey, where did the flu go? Uh, we've had 75 cases this year. But that's way down. We, right. have, we don't have flu because now it's everything. They normally COVID, have 30,000, 35,000 cases COVID. a year in the U.S. But and it's, now we're at 75. It's gone. And see, that was another thing for me. There was a few things that kind of woke, woke me up. I'm not, I'm not woke. woke. I'm awake. You're woke. There's a difference. You're woke. You're the woke. biblical term would be we need to be awake, you said earlier, not woke. And another thing besides the uh, where do we get our news from was I just went online and said, how many people die a year in the U.S.? 2.8, 2.9, 3 million a year from a various uh, list of reasons. And then you look at COVID and, and I feel like those COVID deaths are very exaggerated because just because you have it and you got hit by a car or hadn't had a heart attack, they're counting as a COVID death. But even if half were true or two thirds or even the full amount, that still only equals four weeks out of the whole year of death. So if you have 300,000 deaths purportedly out of 3 million a year, that's 10% of your deaths and we're staying indoors for 10 percent of the deaths of a year and we're even like you said we haven't even we have less deaths this year than we did last year yeah and that really and woke me up to some explain things. that when you got a pandemic. pandemic by the way the 
the WHO, World Health Organization, changed the protocol for what a constitutes a pandemic in order to call this a pandemic. And it's no strange thing that they're, they're uh, shutting churches down in these more liberal places. This this thing, I'm telling you, this is a worldwide satanic attack, and it's worldwide. Yeah. Uh, because it's not just here that freedoms are being taken away. There's a plot afoot. Uh, if you start reading, and I, could I just suggest people quit taking everything media is feeding you because it's easy and go read some stuff on your own. Read what the World Economic Forum is saying. Listen to them. Uh, read what the United Nations is putting out and listen to them. Because what the, those organizations are doing is looking for a global economic reset. They are saying that. I'm not saying that. Uh, and which, they say... Which part of that is to collapse the economy. Right. And because they say Trump and the United States are the biggest problem. Uh, I, I went back and listened to a video I had by economist Jeffrey Sachs. Jeffrey Sachs is a world-renowned economics professor. He's a global leader in sustainable development. By the way, the word sustainable development, that's a catch word. Words like collectivism... Uh, climate control, population control, uh, sustainable development. Anytime you hear those words, you, you in, antennas need to go up. Mm -hmm. Something's something's afoot. And one of those in so he's one of those involved in pushing this global economic reset. He's the president of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. So you kind of get some of who he is, all right? So he's radical, and he's got an agenda. It's the same agenda as World Economic Forum, same agenda as the United Nations. So this is a global problem. It's interesting that the Bible talks about Satan's attempt to take over the world, uh, preparing for this one world leader that's going to come up at some point. Where the cards are falling in place right now for that to happen. But I wanted to just give you some quotes. I, not the whole thing. The whole thing I watched was about 12 minutes, I think. But... This was literally him talking. He's at the Vatican, and this is what he said. He said, multilateralism, that explains itself, is not under threat per se. In most of the world, it is under threat because of the United States. And just listen to that. Multilateralism is under threat because of the United States. Wait, so... Yeah, that term. Yeah, so, so help us with that term a little bit. Okay. Multilateralism is basically, well, in short terms, it's a one-world government. It's mm -hmm. one world. It's the collectivism. They're not worried about the individual rights. They're worried about the collective. So you can't have this nation over here having a great big economy while this country over here hadn't, even though they've been pushing a socialist agenda all this time and their economy collapsed. We've been capitalists. Ours has grown. Well, they want to level the playing field and make everybody equally poor. So what you wind up with is a middle class that's gone, and then you wind up with most people poor, way below the poverty line, and then you have these elites doing whatever they want to do. That's what communism always done. That's what multilateralism is ultimately all about. So just getting everybody on the same same level. Well, and making it making it one world system. Okay, trying to get everything one one everything. And you said reset, and I saw something with Arnold Schwarzenegger the other day. It wasn't a clip taken out of context. He was explaining socialism and how people have it wrong. He said most people, Republicans, conservatives, think that we're trying to change the end result to make everyone fair at the end. He says that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it where you all start out at the same place and you all get an equal chance. But I was thinking as I'm watching that. Wait a second. Life is an ongoing thing. There's no start to a race. We all inherit. We work hard. You give things to your kids. You work hard for the next generation, and you work hard your whole life. But when do you just say, I can just reset everybody so they can all start at the same place? If there's never a start, it's a continuous thing. And that sounded to me like a global reset. Yeah, and you got to – well, that's what it is. got to plan here. These people know what they're doing. They've been working at this a long time. This is not new. It just got in court. But right now, the U.S. is holding that up. Well, we're the big problem. Hmm. And that's what this whole election fraud and all this junk's about. It's for people like us. 
Yeah, because we're we're you, a problem. You're a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you're Bible. Th you you yeah, think you, you think Bible wrong. Thumping. Right. We, we got to get your thoughts under yeah, control. You and your because, God and your guns and yeah. all that junk. But let me go on with what Jeffrey Sachs said, because I have to make this sound a little bit like we know what we're talking about. Uh, but he said, he said, the U.S. is a problem. It became a far more significant problem with Donald Trump. He may or may not be president after November, but the U.S. became vastly more complicated for the world since 2017. You hear what he's saying? We have a multilateral agenda. The problem is the U.S. specifically since Trump got in office because we were doing well under Obama. Hmm. We were in the Paris Peace Accords. We had the Iran nuclear deal. We had all this stuff going our way. Mm -hmm. All the stuff Biden says they're going to put right back. Uh, he said the U.S. has blocked every multilateral initiative of recent years. And he goes on and talks about the uh, Paris Climate Agreement. He goes on and talks about the JCPOA which is the agreement with Iran. And then he stops and brags on China for a while and how wonderful they are. And then he says, uh, quote, there can be no U.S. primacy that is safe for the world anymore. And then he goes to attacking the U.S. Uh, economic policy. He said, he, quote, it is a dangerous country right now. Quote, it will be absolutely dangerous if Trump wins re-election. So you can kind of see their mindset. And so... Coincidentally, election year, COVID-19 gets released by China. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that it's very nefarious, and we know that they've been using it ever since they released it. Uh, we know that it was, it's been used against Trump. We know it's been used to get... Uh, mail-in ballots that were highly suspect laws changed in states election laws changed in states mm -hmm. and i've got to tell you that people are looking at this thinking now this is just politics like normal no no <laughs> this is not normal u.s politics we don't have your normal democrat and republican party going anymore the the democrat party by and large has been taken over by this radical group and this radical agenda. And they said, they say, go back and read their stuff. Read their stuff. And they'll tell you we've got to take over at least one party. We've got to infiltrate all the other parties if we possibly can. I believe we got some, and it's not just Democrats. Uh, we got some Republicans out there that are just what, what Trump called swamp creatures. Mm. And they're all a part of this radical agenda. I mean... This all this stuff that was. Why is Facebook covering everything up? Why is YouTube covering up? Why is everything mm -hmm. censored? When did we start censoring in America? When did we not say you can have your idea? I can have my idea. I'm going to present you the information. You can do with it what you feel. You need to do with it. But here's the information I've got. I might look at your information and say, "Well, you're just full of bull." Mm -hmm. Or I might look at your information and say, "I want to look into that a little bit further." But I don't need the nano state or a nano media company telling me what I can and can't hear and what you can can't hear, what I can can't say, what you can and can't say. Right. Something bad wrong. It seems like this year a lot of big corporations and groups have gotten a lot of say and no one stopped to ask, why is it allowed? Like these voting machines come in. Well, who's behind them? What nations? What companies? Facebook is doing this. Google's doing this. What's behind them? Who's supporting and backing them? Where's their money going to in the election? And we've allowed these big groups to have a huge say in what we say and do, and we're not finding out why they're doing it and who's backing it up and what their goal is. That's yeah. frightening. And if you get your Bible out and start studying, what you're going to find out is that what we're dealing with is of biblical proportion. Now, I don't know. I can't say that strong enough. People, I know people say, well, why are you talking about politics? Because the end time, pol end time world stuff is poly political. And you cannot do Bible honestly and not deal with evil. And what we're doing with evil. Uh, I, I just had to bring my Bible with me. 
because I thought I wanted to share something with you. So, ultimately, though, when we get down to the bottom of stuff, it's not, of course, we're concerned about what's happening with our nation, but it's an, there's an attack on Christianity. It's a better nation because I believe God gave it to us. And we're light. We're Christians. Uh, it was founded on it's Christian founded on principles. Christian principles. Uh, we had people, we've had Revolutionary War. People died for these principles and for this freedom. Mm -hmm. War one, World War Two. people died. What, were the, what was the Vietnam about? Korea. It was about stopping communism. We, went, we fought wars. Mm-hmm. To stop communism people came back from Vietnam veterans and they were disrespected and humiliated as this stuff we saw it turning more and more in the 60s uh, a very radical time and uh, and somewhere along the way it, it began to creep into where now you get congressmen I mean you got a Bernie Sanders yeah that should uh, never happen quoting the communist line you got AOC co quoting the communist line. You got this, these great. How, how do these people get elected mm -hmm. in the United States? My well, has, how long have these? Is there something to these Dominion machines that have been used for maybe many years? You know, the Democrats themselves were complaining about that after the last election mm -hmm. cycle. They said something wrong here with these machines, and so now they're being quiet. Now that it's a Republican deal, mm -hmm. but I'm, you know. I'm not sure that some Republicans aren't in on this. Maybe they're not getting elected by the same fraud. Because how in the world do you explain? I don't know, I'm just going to rant. But how do you explain some of these people coming out and saying what they're saying on the Republican, uh, say a Mitt Romney or oh, uh, in South Carolina, what's his name, Graham, come out and say what they say and think my people are not going to lynch me for saying it. Unless there's, you know, have I got a sure thing over here somewhere? Mm. And so I began to wonder, you know, just how much fraud we got. And what's wrong? What's wrong with asking the question, would you check that machine, make sure it's not cheating? What's wrong with, with saying we want to investigate this and make sure, we just want to make sure that, that the election was fair? When did it become wrong to say, check it out? If, if I were in an election and it was fair, and they said, hey, we think there was fraud, well, man, I'd run quick. Say, no, look, we, we're going to show you everything right? so that you know that this is fair. I want you to know I want this fair and square. But that's not what we've been seeing. We've been seeing them hide it, and we've been seeing congressmen that won't do anything about it courts that won't even look at it uh, where are the true Americans that'll stand up and say well, and there's some out there you know I'm not saying that well it's not just I won't hear it but when you say hey I'm going to release this over to you but then you say you won't or I'm going to do it after the, the, the present, new president sworn in or you want this county checked that's the most uh a possible fraud but no no we'll go check this one that we don't think there's any fraud and we're only going to check samples and we're only going to check the limited limited things and we're going to use our same people to do it something's not right about that well, when you're hiding stuff that something's wrong that's kind of one of the reasons i want to do this you know well, we have these kind of conversations all the time i'm thinking well you know let's just Get her out in the open. Start having these talks. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of stuff we talk about. And we talk about how do you grow up in Jesus Christ. And right now, this is kind of overwhelming. I'm telling you this. Nobody taught me in seminary how you handle. Nobody told me. We didn't have the course that said, okay, around 2019, when you're getting on up there, uh, <laughs> they're going to come out and have this pandemic, and they're going to have these fake elections. And, and uh, they're going to be closing churches down on the East Coast and the West Coast, and they're going to be trying to strip your freedoms away. 
It wasn't even a thought when I was in seminary. Here we are in the middle of it was an elective, how to stop a communist takeover in the midst of a worldwide fake pandemic. Yeah, yeah that uh, it was it. an elective. I didn't take it. I took well, I think about Greek or weaving. Hebrew. You took basket weaving instead. <laughs> Star Wars <laughs> in the Bible. I was going to take. <laughs> so to say we're on a learning curve, and you know, up front, like I say it again, you know, we tried to give them the benefit of the doubt, but the more we look at this, and even you go out and you just look at people, and all these people mask up. Does that not look, feel weird? Yeah. Even if you go into like uh, HEB and you're s sitting there looking at the at the uh, items on the shelf and then you got this mo this thing, this voice going on over your head yeah, saying. Yeah, it sounds like something I got a 1984. Yeah. Comply, like a 1984 comply. book. Yeah, yeah. that's everybody Yeah, and that this word and... keeps coming. Comply, comply. Oh, wait a minute. Let me check my spirit here, but uh, the spirit in me. Is not agreeing. I'm going to say that one more time. The Spirit in me, which is the Holy Spirit of God, Jesus, Christ in you, the hope of glory, He's not agreeing with what they're selling. And then some Simmons blood that's just. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit ornery. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not, I feel like God created me for such a time as this. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think he put like a Trump in office for a time that he put him in. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a little ornery. If you ask me my greatest trait, I'll tell you I'm tenacious. If you ask me my greatest weakness, I'll tell you I'm stubborn as a mule. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, it just a... depends on how you say it. We're going to need more stubbornness what right I now. I want more than anything, and what I want you guys to have more than anything, I want you to have God controlling everything you do. And that's what I want in my own life. And I talk to him about it every day. I ask him for wisdom. I ask him for discernment. And by the way, I'm afraid there's too many Christians out there that aren't spending time with God. Mm -hmm. They're not spending time with God. As a matter of fact, most of them don't even have a walk with God. They come to church on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And then they're making decisions based on what they're hearing without spending time with the Lord and time in His Word and listening to his voice, and then they get ticked off because you have after you've been spending time with him. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't I don't get that. I don't even get how you can look. Look at the people. You got these people over here saying, hey, we think there's election fraud, and we're trying to protect the patriotism of the United States, and we want Trump to stay in office. We think this thing got stolen. Look at the, look at the difference. We got these prayer groups for them, and they're Christian people. I look at them, and, and you can just see the spirit of Christ in them, and they're saying, man, something bad wrong. we got to fix it. And you see that other group, and you just see evil dripping. Mm -hmm. and, and they're lying and plagiarism. And, mm -hmm. and really, you, can, you look at Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, which, by the way, everybody knows they don't plan on Joe Biden being president. No, no. <laughs> no. Really? That'll be gone quick. I mean, so what happened to common sense and think and pray? And I, I know why I said I was going to get this while ago. I didn't. To, uh, but the word, what we're about here is truth. And if, it, if this isn't truth, I want to know it. I want to know it. But uh, you better know I've been reading before you show up. And where were you about to look at? I'm in First Thessalonians 5. I've been, oh, yeah. I've been really because I was drawn to things on the last the doctrines of last things and <clears throat> and Paul in chapter five verse one he says about the times and seasons brothers and sisters you do not need anything to be written to you but you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. Yeah. So if you go and you look at that and I wrote down several passages about him. Uh, 2 Peter 3.10, Matthew 24, 42-44, Revelation 3.3, 3, Revelation 16.14, uh, Luke 12.39, Mark 13.33. On and on and on again, he talks about how Jesus is going to come like a thief in the night. Uh, so I thought that might be important to bring up. I'm just glad I'm not up on the screens trying to put those up really quick. Yeah, you would never get that done because I've never talked that fast in my life. <laughs> and, but he says, now look at this, and, and these words are real important. 
when they say peace and security, all right, we're taking care of you. Mm -hmm. We're bringing you peace. We're bringing you security. Everything's just great. We know what's best. And he says it's then sudden destruction. In other words, it just starts happening. Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of reminds me of what's been going on. It just suddenly starts happening. Sudden destruction will come upon them like labor pains. Right? Sudden destruction, but it's like labor pains. Uh, Y'all's wives went in labor. Mm -hmm. Right? That's when you left. <laughs> <laughs> you said, yes, ma'am, whatever you want. Yeah. Somebody else moved in, you know. <laughs> but but you, she would just be going along, everything fine. She'd be laughing, and all of a sudden, this pain would grip her. But then it quit. And then it, then uh, as, as time went on, what happened was that those birth pains got closer together, mm -hmm. and they got more intense. And then the baby was born. And he said, okay, it comes suddenly, but it comes suddenly like the birth path comes on. And so there, it grows in intensity. So I think we can look for things to grow in, in intensity. And it says, and they will not escape. And where are they not going to escape? They're not going to escape when the King Jesus comes. And he comes in his wrath. He's coming next time in his wrath. That's what the Bible teaches us. He says, but you brothers and sisters, but you, I love this, you're not in the dark. In other words, they may be in the dark about what's taking place, but we're not in the dark about what's taking place. Why? We're his children. We've got the Holy Spirit of God living in us. we got light. For this day to surprise you, uh, for this day to surprise you like a thief, Jordan, ain't going to be no surprise to you. Justin, be no surprise to Justin. He's, he knows Jesus. He's already been reading this stuff. We've been, if he hadn't been reading it, I've been telling him about it. <laughs> <laughs> he says, for you are all children of light, children of the day, children of light and children of the day. We, we do not belong to the night or the darkness. We're different. Well, they don't like our difference, but we're different. So then let us not sleep. Now look at, he's going to give us a list of things to do and not do right through here. The first thing, let us not sleep. All right. You see this stuff coming. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. What's everybody else doing? They're sleeping. He said, well, here's what I want you to do, child of God. Wake up. And that brings up a note about the news. So often when we're learning things, we're just passively taking it in. They call it the boob tube or they call it the TV, just the zombie tube. And if you're not actively engaging with what you're learning and checking who said it and why and how, you're just passively taking it in like yeah. a zombie. I call it the Chamberlain effect. And uh, if you don't know who Chamberlain is, Chamberlain was the prime minister of England back when uh, Germany started raising its ugly head for World War II. Hitler was just getting started. He had this guy on the cabinet named Winston Churchill that kept telling him, you better watch that dude over in Germany. And he kept saying, yeah, oh man, ain't nothing, there's nothing to see here. He's over there making treaties with Hitler, Chamberlain is. And, uh, well, we know how that story came out. But he was just buying into the garbage of, the, of whatever propaganda was being thrown out there. And Churchill was right. And that same thing happening now. So we got the Chamberlain effect going, these people are... They're just buying into it, believing it, nothing to see here. <clears throat> but so he says, first of all, let us don't don't be asleep. And then he says it again, but let us stay awake. And then the next thing he tells us, and Nat needs to really listen to this, be self control. <laughs> <laughs> the apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> be self controlled. Yeah. It's not time to go start shooting things, breaking stuff. Be <laughs> self-controlled. Uh, by the way, self-control is a fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah, so. If I'm, last one on the list. Uh, last one on the list. Yeah. But, in a good way. But it's a good one. It's a good one. Be oh, yeah. self-controlled, which is basically to be spirit-controlled. Ben, is it's free of the Spirit's the only way you can do it. What's the verse? Uh, kingdom of God is not eat, eating and drinking, but power, and discipline, self control? Fire, yeah. Let How's that sound? Uh, yeah. Or whatever translation. 
So, so then, your your translation, you were in six, verse six. Mm -hmm. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but it says, but let us stay awake. Yeah. So be alert and sober. Right. Is what is what yeah, the NSB I is like saying. I like self control because it's not like we're not really talking about alcohol here. <laughs> right. We're talking about the spirit within us. Sober minded. Yeah, sober minded. I like how it doesn't say be woke. And you know, you hear people talk about karma and you're like, no, no. The Bible doesn't say karma, it says sowing and reaping. And then people in cultures talk about woke, it says, no, no, we don't need to be woke, but we do need to be awake to what's going on. Well, it's hard to be self control. I mean, your head wants to blow up. You hear all this junk. You're thinking, well, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. You got. Well, everybody can go to that bathroom. It doesn't make any difference with you, boy or girl. We're going to let our child decide what sex they are when they get to be a certain age. And, no. And then we get this congressman praying, you know, amen and a woman, and he's been praying in the name of Brahman, <laughs> the god of the Hindus, and every other god, whichever one you want to choose. And, and, uh, and it, I mean, it just go, we go from crazy to crazier to crazier, and light's dark, and dark's light. <laughs> And, and we got all these people sitting there. Really? I mean, just buying into it. Yeah, you know that there was people all around the world that when he said amen and a woman were like, yeah, that's right. Do you know to get them both? Yes. You know, which amen is, that's not even. It you, means let it be. Yeah, that, let, it, let it be. <laughs> There's it does, nothing to do let, with masculinity here. Yeah, nothing to do with Lack gender. Lack thereof. <laughs> you know, like we're control. we're, we're. <laughs> We're male chauvinist pigs every time we say amen. <laughs> or if you order I don't even know if male chauvinist pig's a word anymore or a phrase. But. If you order off a menu instead of a woman you, that was the joke yeah. today. Yeah, Donald Trump Jr. said. <laughs> the woman you. <laughs> but, you know, the, the ironic part that the fact that they're putting legislation in to get rid of pronouns for him and her, yet the guy is making the point to say amen and a women. I said, what's your point? You just want to get rid of the pronouns anyway, so why are you bothering? The whole point falls in on itself. <clears throat> okay, so verse 7. Mm -hmm. For those who sleep, sleep uh, at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled. So we stand on that, be self-controlled. So we see Stay awake, be self-controlled. And then he said, going to give us two things. Going to give us some armor to put on. He mm -hmm. said, put on the armor of faith. Put on the armor of faith. And so, where do I get faith? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the Word of God. So in order to walk in faith, I have to be walking in the promises of God, knowing the Word of God. How many Christians don't know the Word of God? <clears throat> and love. And love. How does love work in a situation like this? Help me out. Truth. No, you ain't have love without truth. I mean, if I could tell you a liar, I'm tell I'm hiding the truth from you. You got, you know, you need a remedy, and I'm not giving it to you because I'm afraid I'll hurt your feelings. Right. And That's you you good. said that we're in the middle of, of basically in uh, we're in high stakes. And, you know, love looks different in different situations. And I know you always say we need to look at what God says love is. But with our kids, there's one way we love them when everything's fine and dandy. But there's another way we love them when there's high stakes. And they've run into a road. They've, they're about to touch a hot stove. They're about to make a bad choice. And I don't know if anyone else looks around there and says, hey, is that loving what he just did? But if you know the situation and you know their relationship, you would know it is. Oh, yeah. If there's a... If you see a little girl being raped, you don't ignore it. Because, well, I want to love that guy. No, you, you're you going to try your best to take care of that situation, protect that little girl. That's the loving thing to do in that situation, right? And uh, and But Jesus said, love your enemies. Well, how do you love your enemies and stand against them at the same time? But that's what, exactly what Christians have to do. I love my enemies. And so let me kind of give you guys an example of how I'm doing it. And you, maybe you got some ideas you own. But yesterday morning in my prayer time with Sugar Lump, uh, I was praying about, uh, I was praying for Stacey Abrams. I was thinking about the Georgia election. Stacey Abrams, of course, she's, I think she's big deal in stealing an election. And I prayed she's trying to steal this one too. And so I was praying for her. And I was praying 
honestly, that she would get caught and that she would be prosecuted, but I didn't stop there. I went on and I prayed that God would redeem her. I asked God to bring conviction to her, to let her be born again and change her. And through that process, you know, I want her to be arrested. I asked God to get her arrested. <laughs> but I also asked Him to redeem her because I think that same person redeemed of God could be a powerful force for God rather than a powerful force for the enemy. Mm. And to me, that's a loving way to to approach it. I'm against what you're doing, but I'm for you, and I'd really love to see you working in the kingdom of God. I think it, that's, that's one way. Anyway. Well, so, so to answer way. that question, I, it made me think of Romans 12 passage, uh, 17 through 21, never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men, if possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave, it, leave room for the wrath of God, for his written vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him, and if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And so, even earlier in that passage, he says in verse 9, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. So, Abhor what is evil. Yeah. So, so there's, a, there's, a, there's an instance in here where we cannot just say it's a loving thing to do. Just says, be quiet and remain silent on this stuff. You've got to say, that's wrong. That's evil. We can't tolerate it. There is nothing loving about letting evil run rampant. Right. But when it comes to personal people, we know that we run into people every day that we don't agree with, right? That that aren't that There's aren't. There's a difference between stealing my hot dog and stealing my country too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Right. And so and so, like if evil were to the scale of what we're looking at yeah. now, we would say. No, we're not going to stand by and tolerate this type of deal. Now you run into people that you d would disagree with but every day, but they're not necessarily committing <laughs> some type of evil against you. You just disagree with them. Right. Politically, uh, it could be in religious matters or whatever the case may be, but those are the people that we're not just going to uh, start cursing at or <laughs> getting mad at and hollering at and things like that. We love them. We tell oh, them the man. truth. There are people that disagree. I mean, I got... Sugar Lime, I don't even always agree. Right. I mean, she likes broccoli. Well, I, I kind of like broccoli. Well, yeah, but you're twisted. <laughs> well, it, you ain't right. We've done that since you were born. It may come baby. up with. Uh, huh? It may come up with different topics too. Uh, for example, um, we may be against an agenda, and we're gonna fight against that agenda legally every way we can. And let's just take one. Let's talk about homosexuality or something. We're going to be against the agenda because it's not just what they say, that it's just your business and no one else's. It's going to affect everybody. It's going to affect everyone down to the family unit and beyond. Um, and we may be against that, but then I'm going to run into someone individually, and I see more than just the person's sexuality. I, I see them made in the image of God, and I see them in who he made them to be and who they can become, and especially in Christ. So I can be against something and even vote against something, but still try to love them as best as I can. If they're not committing some crime against me or trying to hurt me or well, something else. problem when you're defining yourself by your sexual preference, and that's who you think you are. And so that motivates you and runs you. I mean, if you ask me who I am and what motivates me and runs me, I'm, when my feet hit the floor in the morning, I'm a child of God. That's what motivates me and runs me. And living for something bigger than yourself. The kingdom of God is much bigger than we are. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm stuck on me and and my, you know, anything about me that shouldn't be what it is, I could define myself every morning because I'm short and ugly, but it probably wouldn't be real successful. <laughs> but I'd even be depressed. <laughs> there's a way to love people individually, yet still work against topics and issues at the same time. Right. Uh, now, if someone's against you personally, that, that may be a little different matter, but in your everyday dealings... There is a way to love people and seek for their best interest. 
and pray for their best interest and talk to them about that interest too uh, without saying, just because I disagree with you, I don't like you. Well, a Christian is not mad at you because you, they disagree with you. I mean, we're not the ones going to burn your building down because we disagreed with you. That's y'all. Right. We're not, we're not going to attack you. Uh, we're going to love you. So, I mean, if, if all, if you had a problem, we'd be right there for you. Oh, just, just let us know what you, we need. We'll be there. Uh, it's until you start trying to take our stuff away, right? right? Yeah, you know, we have to stand against evil. God hates injustice and unbalanced scale. Wrath of God's coming for that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to love that individual. Why? Give me a chance. I'll love you to death. Uh, you know, I can name him. I wouldn't let sit down at my table and feed them. <laughs> right. Uh, be but friends I'm, with them as long as they'd let me. But I want them to know Jesus. Right. I'm going to tell them Primary what I think, number one. Yep. And I believe it's okay for me to tell you what I, th- what, what I think. Just like I'm willing to listen to what you think. And we're not going to agree on everything. Matter of fact, right now we're going to agree on very little. What what I hear them saying, I don't agree with much any of it. Because it's not biblical truth. So anyway, uh, he's coming like a thief in the night. All right, so we're talking about what we do in the middle, middle of all this. Well, we're going to stay awake. We're going to be self-controlled. We're going to have walk in faith. Uh, we're going to walk in love. And then the hope of salvation. See, our, we don't have a reason to be feared, <laughs> be fearful, because we have the hope of salvation. Ultimately, we win. No matter what they do, you kill the body. It's everything. Yeah, and that's what Jesus said. Don't fear him who kills the body, but fear him who can throw both soul and body in hell. <clears throat> uh, for God didn't, and I love this. God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So when the full wrath of the Lamb comes, uh, I just don't believe we're going to be here. He's going to get us out of it. Matter of fact, if you go back to the passages about stay awake, you'll find references back to what Jesus was saying in Matthew 24. And there he said, it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah. When Noah was warned of God, Noah built an ark. And Noah was saved from being drowned in the flood. He said, and then the same passage said it'd be as it was in the days of Lot. God took Lot out of Sodom before fire fell down out of heaven. So I believe he's going to take care of his people. I don't sit around worrying about what God's fixing to do. I think God's mm-hmm. going to take care of us in it. Uh, for God did not point us to for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. So that we who are awake, or whether awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. And then He says down at the bottom, the next thing we're supposed to do. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up as you already do. And that's honestly, guys, that's what I do with y'all off and on. You know, mm-hmm. I took y'all in my wing years ago to, to encourage you, to mentor you, to to help you grow in Christ because one of the days I won't be at the table anymore but the candle and the fire I hope the fire keeps burning mm. <laughs> hope the fire keeps burning well we probably went on longer than anybody's going to listen to hey, there is a bonus <laughs> in this chapter at the end uh, just because you said you talked about tripartite earlier body, soul, and spirit and sometimes people are like well how do you know that where do you get that from but I was just looking down in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 and if you just read the Bible enough you're going to catch this stuff eventually you don't have to be a genius you just need to read it a lot well yeah and the more you read it, it, it you become you think like it you remember it you find yourself when you're talking you, verses are just kind of coming out <laughs> Because you're thinking more like the Word of God. Then. When you think like the Word of God, you're thinking like God. But that verse here just says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I just thought it was neat that it was in the same passage you were talking about. It's a big amen. Mm-hmm. 
Y'all got any, we're going to pray here in just a minute, but y'all got anything you want? Add, say, ask. Wonder mm -hmm. why I'm on a tangent. Well, I'm glad for this, just because, you know, people get to see you Sunday, Wednesday maybe, and you've done study all week, you've been thinking what you're learning, spend time with God all week, and then you say something and maybe someone doesn't quite get in here, but I can come into your office and say, hey, you know, Trump's pushed for this vaccine, but not everyone wants to take it. Why? And then you can sit down with me and just be able to say, well, well here's some things. And I come out and go, hey, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, you're talking about that because we did that this morning. We, yeah. We and, had um, that very conversation. And so hopefully people are able to watch this and go, okay, I didn't understand necessarily where you're coming from with mass yet. But now I'm thinking, what news am I looking at? What's the science say? Why are the rules so inconsistent everywhere you go? Hey, this does make a little more sense. Well, and, and, and just in case I'm not being clear when I'm looking at it, I think it Satan wants you to mask up, I think. Jesus wants you to be free. Uh, can, I, can I go to the Constitution? Mm -hmm. A lot of these mass mandates, people need to read the Bible. They also need to read the Constitution. And according to the first article, I know you wish you hadn't started this, <laughs> but the first article of the Constitution, the first three articles of the Constitution lay out the powers. The first article is about legislative power. The second article is about uh, administrative power. The third article is about judicial power. The very first of that first article, it says that they are the only ones who can make a law. And so if you're in a legislative branch in the federal government, that's where law is made. If you're in a, if you're in a state level, it's our state legislature that makes law. Mm -hmm. The administrative branch does not have the power given to them by the Constitution, neither the Texas Constitution nor the U.S. Constitution, to make law. Neither, and this is very important, there is no emergency power in the Constitution. Go read it. It does not exist, and that's all I hear. Well, the government, governor mandated, the judge mandated, the... The mayor mandated. The judge, the governor, and the mayor have no business mandating. And they, what they do is they do stuff just long enough. If we let them get away with it, they just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, Ryan, I'm telling you, that mask that's doing you 97% of junk getting through it on a disease that's 99% curable, except they took away hydroxychloroquine and some stuff that we know is working and replaced it with remdesivir, which we know causes harm and is very expensive. And, and just don't even get me started on the drug companies now and all the money that's being made through them uh, and some of that stuff that's going on. Follow the, follow the money for sure. Oh, yeah, you always follow the money. I was smiling earlier because you, you were talking about the mass and I just you – know, thought of another verse i hadn't thought of but where it says in matthew 5 let your light shine no one hides a lamp let and puts it in her basket shine before me and it made me go to second corinthians 3 where it says now the now the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom not not compliance right. freedom and it says and we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the lord you can't do that with a veiled face are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Isn't it amazing? The Bible just talks about it over and over and over and, and in a lot of different ways, a lot of different places. And I really think it's time for Texans to take that mask and throw it in the dirt. Well, a lot of people are throwing it in the dirt and then putting it back on their yeah, face. They're <laughs> yeah, they're the face. And, <laughs> but I've just, uh, I've just been walking around amazed at as long as this has gone on now that people hadn't begun to put two and two together. And then you got the mask police out there, you know. Yep, everybody trying to get you. Condemning you because you want, you want to be free. You know, we went to lunch today. We wore it for eight seconds in. We wore it for eight seconds out. 99.97% of our time in that restaurant was unmasked. And the only time we were away from people was when it was on for the eight seconds in and out. If the law was consistent and the science backed it, <laughs> and that waitress been over there right next to us. Their master bringing you food, and not everyone that's working there has one on or not. You know, it's just like can, if we could be consistent here, it's not. Oh, by the so. way, you're supposed to sterilize. According to CDC protocol, every time you put that mask on, you're supposed to sterilize your hands, or sanitize them, and then when you take it off, you're supposed to sanitize your hand again. 
You see people in stores all the time, and they're just handling that mask and pull the mask pull, down, put pull it, pull it up, it down, pull talking it. to you. How many times you had that conversation? They pull that mask down, and talk to you, so you can understand what they're saying. <laughs> Do we have time for confession before we go? Because I have to admit, I ordered another mask this past week. You did? It was well, nine bucks. It was on eBay, and it was not N95 because they don't make Star Wars masks. And I'm just going to be honest. I ordered a Boba Fett mask yeah. because I want to wear it at least for Halloween. <laughs> and and I want to be clear, too. If, if somebody, if you feel like you need a mask and you want to come to church, we're not going to judge you. Uh, that's That's not my point. There are people... Who have uh, compromised immune systems? We have a, uh, cancer patients, people. I would suggest that you not buy into the whole cloth mask thing, and go get an N95 mask and really do. The N95 mask does protect. There really is a disease. We're not trying to say that. And if you feel like you need to wear it, and I know people here do, mm. but I'm just saying, you know, follow the real science. Get one that will really protect you and let us know if you don't want us around you. And we'll be glad to keep our distance. But, but otherwise, just but outside of that, I'm going to treat you like I did during every flu epidemic that came along. I'm going to go wash my hands when I get through talking to you. I shake 500 hands or so every Sunday morning. Right. And so I. <laughs> you send me past, <laughs> past that. <laughs> Pass every one of them I all the way to the office. I go about a gallon of that junk every yeah. week. Because like, I know germs are real. I'm not saying. How do we survive every flu until now? I yeah. feel like. But just watch where your news is coming from oh, if you're not and, sure. And, and, and used to, they told us you need to go get exposed and get your immune system up. And now then, we're just killing people's immune systems. So, so it's been mentioned several times that there's certain news places to watch. Right. Watch. I've heard everybody say over again, mm -hmm. watch, watch the right news. Newsmax. N Newsmax. One America News. But read the sources oh, of those articles too, yeah. just in case. Yeah. And the Blaze, he can. He gets a little out there sometimes, yeah, he does. Uh, but I'd rather hear the get out there a little far that direction than this. My, really, what we're hearing on mainstream. Media is total propaganda, mm -hmm. and it's run by people with big money. And they're controlling and shutting down. I never thought I'd do. I'd see a day when they said you can't say that. And in the day I heard, we'll never get through, will we? Y'all can edit it. <laughs> uh, today I heard that the uh, who's the leader of the Proud Boys. Y'all remember his name? Mm. Yeah, I don't but I heard he got arrested for burning a Black Lives Matter flag. But it's okay you can for Black Lives America. Matter to burn, burn a U.S. Me. flag. I don't. Or a police station. What's the, yeah, or a police station. But it's just not consistent. There's something, you know, you just got to know. Enrique? Wrong. How do you miss it? Is it Enrique Torrio? I believe it is, yeah. I, I need to check that story because I, I, I hadn't seen it yet. I thought there was something about yeah, you might burning check a it out, church or a flag church. So I want to go and see. I did get that second hand. Yes, yeah, second hand. Yeah. But you said some stations. And just a reminder, too, like I said, even if you're on Newsmax or anywhere else, make sure the article you're reading is from them, written by them. And it's not just a copy and paste of some other article they got from Associated Press. Know who yeah. the places are and what their agendas I'm, are. The, the mass stuff I've been sharing scientifically, I went and read their journals and their articles pre-1920 or 2020 1920 2020 I really, I really took us back to the, <laughs> to the cholera yeah we're going back to world war one era Whoa. <laughs> spanish flu watch out but yeah. i'm but i'm I, the, a lot of these articles right here are saying proud boys leaders arrested in connection with burning a uh, black lives matter banner uh and then one of these ordered to leave dc and stay away once he was released from jail. Yeah. So, yeah, there's several articles that are just a quick. We could talk about this stuff all day, but I, I, I just encourage people to not quit letting them think for you and think for yourself. And, and so. Starting God's word. Yeah. And we're, and we plan on doing these regularly to where we can yeah. just have a little <laughs> round table. We're doing it anyway. <laughs> we sit around the office and do this kind of thing. So just put why it on not the camera. just share it with you. People, if they want to be 
-hmm. involved. And I hope we can get to a day where we can actually do them live. Yeah. And uh, and let people send in questions. But if you have any questions, and you can send them to Jordan at Annabelle dot com. Yeah. I don't read that email. <laughs> <laughs> I check it all as spam. Mad, get out of Justin. Yeah, if you're Justin, mad, get a hold of Justin at Annabelle.com and he'll be able to. <laughs> For all donations, out. please send. He's the biggest one in our group. Uh -huh. and so he, he, is, he is the our, tallest. He handles everything. Uh. But I liked your note about the last verse of that passage was, therefore encourage one another. Jesus is coming yeah. back. He's in control. We have a role to play here and we don't want to sit around and be asleep. But um, we don't we be got a sleep. Role. We don't be discouraged. We don't be fearful. That's not Christians. Christians are we got the joy of the Lord. We win. It's, I mean, this victory. I don't care what they throw at, at us. We're not beat. And the Holy Spirit's still moving. And we're armed with faith. It said hope and love, all right there. But we need to take that up every day, or we're not going out there with the weapons we we are given. Yeah. I miss seeing a lot of the people that um, would come into the church because there's. I mean, it's it's not what it used to be, of well, not course. Since and COVID, no, people are still afraid to come. I don't think you need to be afraid to come. I don't. I think there's. I mean, on the way home from to lunch today, I ran home and ate one sausage and drove back. But on the way over there, I heard the COVID death report. I heard COVID, COVID, COVID all the way home. I got back in my car, just the time it took to eat a sausage, my truck. Headed back over here and I heard COVID, COVID, COVID. All on the way up, on the way back, all I heard was COVID. And that's all you hear people, not just radio, but people in general. That's all they're discussing. I can go back to the communists, go back to uh, Hitler's propaganda machine. And you got Gables and he's just advertising. You know, if you, say, if you tell a lie long enough, everybody believe it. Mm-hmm. No matter how big the lie. I believe you could tell people elephants fly. And keep telling it. And tell them, we got scientific evidence. Follow the science. Elephants fly. And you would have a, a lot of people in America that honestly would believe that elephants flew. Mm. There is a species of elephant that flies. We have found it in the Amazon. The it was the, in a tree. The Dumbos. You couldn't see it before because it was it was disguising itself in an apple tree. It had its, <laughs> it had its toenails colored. It's kind of like a predator. Yeah. <laughs> but you hate, to you hate to lose a whole year of your life. I think of family members that won't see anybody and they're as healthy as can be. We're talking about, and we're not minimizing deaths and how, how what's happened, but we're talking about four weeks out of an entire year's worth of deaths here. And we're missing life and everything God created us to be and what we need to go do and what we need. You're missing life. That's a big point. If you're locked up in fear all the time and staying in your house, you're already dead. You, you're going nowhere. You're doing nothing. You're not letting your family come over because you're scared of them. That's a problem. And there, we need to check out a report this week of a bunch of doctors worldwide that just came out with thousands. I think it was 2,000 doctors. Oh, there's thousands of them. And they said quarantining the healthy and something that only kills one percent of the population at, at most is more detrimental to their health their relationships society economy everything than this thing could ever be well, there I, has never been a time in history when we quarantined right healthy people. Uh, yeah never healthy people yeah but now we do because so for population don't tell control. me there's not a bigger agenda there's an evil dark agenda yeah let's pray <laughs> lord uh, you're a father. Mm -hmm. What a privilege it is to come before you. And Lord, as we make our way through all this, I sure pray that you'd give us wisdom and give us discernment. Lord, we've only got so much time to read and study, so I pray that you would guide us even to those things that we do look at and let us have a good sense to leave alone what we're not supposed to look at. And uh, Lord, we just really, really need your help. And then, Lord, we got... Uh, what is a evil agenda going on in this world that we're living in. Lord, I pray that you'd expose the corruption. Uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. there's a group heading to Washington. and Lord, they've done everything they can to keep them from going. They've shut down restaurants and shut down hotels because 
They don't want them to have their voice, and they don't want them to be seen. And uh, I pray, Lord, that you just open up the doors. I pray that you'd put protection around them. I understand that there's supposed to be some people from Antifa that are in the middle of them that are going to be dressed like them to harm things and do bad things. And I pray, Lord, you'd protect them and guard them from that. And pray that the, the devices of the evil one would not prevail. Uh, Lord, I pray that, Lord, we need a giant-sized miracle right now because we're in danger of losing this country. Mm. And I pray, Lord, that you would come through. Maybe we need a, a, bail, a, a, a Mount Carmel moment, Lord. But I'd ask that you do something to where you and you alone could be glorified, that your name would be lifted high. And, Lord, that we would know that you did it. And, Lord, even the enemy would know you did it. Glorify yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.